and make sure you follow her on Twitter and a lot of great tweets all day long. Ann Coulter, how you doing? Fantastic. How are you, Mark Simone? Well, I'm good. Now, explain this to me. Uh, they're saying the president's speaking tonight while there's a hurricane. The optics are terrible. Uh, how come it was okay for Biden to speak while uh, all our cities are in flames and rioting? There were no optics there. What was the difference? <laughs> yes, in fact, Obama was on some big European trip when um, the Black Lives Matter protest resulted, um, ended up with that um, Black Lives Matter aficionado in Dallas um, assassinating five cops. And, and at the time, um, what, what did Obama say, both in Europe and when he came home? Well, it's hard to untangle motives in a case like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, and interestingly, they did the exact same thing early on in uh, what was the, what, the big the big hurricane that first happened under Trump, the one that hit Puerto Rico. I forget the yeah. name of it. Um, um, <laughs> he did something. He gave um, gave a speech, made some announcement, and I have this in resistance is futile. Um, sorry, I can't remember the precise thing he was doing. But first, they say, um, "Oh, you're 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 holding off because you don't want." Um, or um, um, you're trying to get, it was bad news, that's what it was. You're doing this in the middle of a hurricane, so no one will notice. And Trump said, wait a second, aren't more people watching TV during a hurricane? <laughs> and then they turned around and said, aha, you're taking advantage of the hurricane to get more people to listen. <laughs> so, uh, hey, uh, apparently Democrats are in a panic now because they've got all the focus groups and all the polling data in, and it has shown that rioting all over the country has hurt them. Now, I think if you had just asked a four-year-old kid, he could have told you that. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with these idiots? I mean, who thought that wasn't hurting? No, I know. And, I, I mean, as I wrote in my column this week, I am frustrated that Trump isn't doing more. He, as usual, he talks a good game. He's saying all the right things. He's, you know, defending police and 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 denouncing the rioters and the, and the arsons and so on. Um, but isn't doing anything. But you know that's our choice. That's that's the thing. It's a it's a binary choice here. Um, I still wish he would he would send in troops to suppress these insurrections. And I don't think it makes any logical sense to say elect me and I'll stop these riots. Um, well, you're president now. Why can't you stop the riots? But but your only choice is you don't have a choice of um, a president who, who who talks tough and acts tough or talks gently and acts tough. <laughs> which is, I think, the preferred option. You have a choice between a president who says the right things or a president and a party that celebrates the looters and the arsonists, as the Democratic Party does and did at its convention, um, documented in some detail, oddly enough, by the Washington Post, um, an article linked in my, in my column this week um, saying, even the Washington Post remarks on the Democratic convention, that this was a remarkable development having a major political party associate itself so closely with a protest movement. But, you know, the Democrats, they are a protest movement. They, they think that this country is bad and evil and systemically racist. Um, and, and, you know, vote for us. Yeah. <laughs> we hate you. <laughs> hey, could you explain, anytime it's a Republican who's successful, is Reagan, suddenly he's a racist. Uh, George W. Bush, suddenly he's a racist. Bush Sr. is a racist. Uh, they keep trying this, and it never seems to work. Why do they keep doing the same stupid thing that doesn't work? No, you're right. They, the, the Democrats, are, they're like cats. They only have certain moves, and you kind of know <laughs> what they're going to do. Um, in, in, in a broader sense, uh, if, you are, if you are not left-wing, the way they go after you is either call you stupid or call you crazy. And within the variations of crazy, um, I mean, obviously, like, you know, Dan Quayle, dumb, Richard Nixon, crazy, um, <laughs> Early on, when I think when I was promoting slander, one of my friends, my second book, one of my friends called me and said, "Congratulations! They're calling you crazy." It means they know yeah. they can't call you stupid. Oh, Robert Bork, perfect example. Um, I always imagine some intern running into the office. I've got it! I've got it! Let's call him dumb. Um, <laughs> Oh, settle down, Skippy. We're going with crazy on this one. Um, and white supremacist is is the new <laughs> the new. We we can't formulate an argument, so we'll just call you a poopy head. Yeah, well, that's really what it is. And, you know, if you watch anything, CNN, MSNBC, I've never seen anybody meet the press ever discuss policy. 
<laughs> it's always yeah. just. But uh, when you watch a convention, uh, you got to watch MSNBC. Every time they come back to the anchors, they look like they're about to commit suicide. They look yeah. so demoralized every time. No, you're totally right about that. That was kind of heartening. I didn't watch that much of either of the conventions. Um, I followed a lot of it on online, um, tuned in for you know little bits and pieces here and there. Um, but but even that much, it it seemed clear that that the Republican convention. Um, I mean, I, there were things I would have changed, and a lot of things I would have changed. But it just seemed m- more like a convention, more sort of an upbeat, um, fun thing. Whereas the Democrats' convention, I just, it was just like watching MSNBC. I wasn't sure if, wait, is this the convention, or is this just, you know, a guest talking? <laughs> so, uh, it, uh, well, tonight should be pretty uh, amazing. Hey, Ann Coulter, what do you think of New York City? Uh, uh, is this ever going to... Uh, come back i mean it's a mess right now and there's no leadership everybody's talking about that um i'm i'm in the jerry seinfeld camp i think it will come out it's going to take some work um but i just my 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 sense is that i mean you have a lot of rich people a lot of media people a lot of wall street people and new york city is a lot of fun um, the Hamptons gets boring after a while. <laughs> I promise you many other parts of the country, how be- however beautiful they are, um, New York is a lot of fun. And I, I, I just feel like they'll, even the media people will say, oh, yeah, okay, it's fine. Let the looters destroy Ferguson. Let them destroy Portland or Seattle. But my neighborhood, <laughs> my fun city, no, we're putting our foot down here, um, which is why I keep, I keep in, um, trying to launch the Ray Kelly for mayor campaign on your show. Oh, uh, I'm but for it. Well, see, I really wish you would give us some indication so we could start. I mean, I've heard that, no, no, he doesn't want to run, or I don't know, his wife doesn't want him to run, um, because we got to find somebody else. Um, oh, no, I've, I've, ta- I've talked to him about it, and he is, uh, yeah, he's willing, but it's, uh, it's just too early. It's a year and a half away. A year oh, okay, fine. Yeah, fine, anyway, fine, fine, fine. Yes, but I'm yes. telling you, any law and order candidate is going to win in New York City because, uh, I mean, the city was a paradise under Giuliani and Bloomberg, and people never knew it could be so great. I mean, even all the ones moving out um, tend to be the ones we wouldn't have remarked upon it if this were back in the in the Koch Dinkins era when people got married and had kids. Oh, well, you can't stay in New York. The crime's too too terrible. You have to move to the suburbs. Um, we're only used to seeing all these young families in New York because Giuliani and Bloomberg made it so safe. Yeah, and, you know, everybody moved to Brooklyn because suddenly it was safe now. <laughs> I don't know where they're going to go. Uh, so far we got, uh, I think it's 400,000 people have left. I mean, left. I mean, changed their address with the post office. Left. And uh, uh, de Blasio, how, how on earth will we get through another year of this guy? He hates restaurants. I know. I know. That, that, that is disturbing, the, the upcoming year. And um, I totally endorse your campaign to have, um, which you tell me is, is actually legal, that the governor can step in and remove a mayor at some point. Or at least yeah, for ninety uh, days or something. What's the rule? Well, he can remove him, suspend him for a while, which it might be enough to get things moving. The New York State Supreme Court can act. That's the only body that can do it. They can remove the mayor and hold a special election. New York State Supreme Court, Democratic control. That won't happen. But I like what they're doing in Minneapolis. They're suing the mayor, and everybody should get together and do that here. At least you can get them under oath. You can make them uh, explain everything. You can pressure them that way. Uh, but, and I think everybody, everybody would contribute to that. Can you imagine that GoFundMe? <laughs> no, that would be wonderful. Well, I mean, what's I, I think New York is, by and large, a lot of fun right now. Um, the bad thing is all the homeless people, people shooting up, the danger. Um, you know, it's all costume jewelry and getting home early these days. But other than that, it's loads of fun. Um, I went to one of my favorite restaurants last weekend. 
Um, and and the owner told me that when they were first allowed to open, I guess there's a curfew. Restaurants have to be closed by yeah. 11 p.m. And he said de Blasio had had deputized all of these sheriffs. He said everybody at the table at the tables. It's all outside. Um, they'd all gotten their checks. We were we were trying to get them all to pay. It was a little bit before 11. All these sheriffs burst into the restaurants and start um, screaming at the owner, saying there cannot be one person in here after 11, or we're taking your liquor license. So he had to go around and just tell people, just get out of here. You don't have to pay. Leave, leave, leave. <laughs> Yeah. That's oh they'll come down like total fascists on business owners, um, but and people not wearing masks, um, people traveling from Montana, but um, you know the people holding us up, um, sh- shooting up drugs in the street, defecating in the street, wandering around talking to themselves. No, they're untouchable. Well, welcome to Cuomo's New York. Uh, I'd say we're out of time, but uh, uh, get, go to AnnCoulter.com. Everything's at her website. You can get all the all the books there. Make sure you follow her on Twitter. It's Ann Coulter at Twitter. Get her latest book, Resistance is Futile. And Ann Coulter, thanks for being with us. Good to talk to you, Mark Simone. Bye-bye. All right, take care.